Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the narrative lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast for April 21st, 2024. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter. And we are in the book of Acts uh, as we are during the Easter season. But we're also moving uh, this week as well to include um, a reading from one of Paul's epistles. So uh, the, our readings are Acts 17, verses 1 through 9, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Uh, you'll see uh, that these readings are connected, of course, because the reading from Acts is about the founding of the church at Thessalonica uh, and, and Paul's, uh, Paul uh, and Silas uh, coming to Thessalonica to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should note uh, that we're skipping a lot uh, between where we were last week. So we were in Acts chapter 3 last week where Peter uh, uh, and John were healing at the beautiful gate. Um, they, of course, are witnesses uh, to Jesus' earthly ministry and witnesses, direct witnesses of Jesus' ministry and resurrection, uh, life, death, and resurrection, I should say. We're moving this week to Paul, who uh, who has a vision of Jesus, uh, but was not a, a, a firsthand witness to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. So just to note that switch, uh, this year in the narrative lectionary, we're not including the story of of Saul or Paul's conversion. Uh, You all know that story of the Damascus Road. Uh, But we're moving just uh, immediately to uh, Paul's uh, ministry, Paul's uh, uh, preaching of the gospel, uh, to further and further circles out. So Thessalonica is a a major uh, trade city in what is now Greece uh, and so the, the gospel that begins in Jerusalem and then Judea and Samaria is now uh, reaching out to the, the wider Roman Empire, just as we talked about uh, a few weeks ago when we moved into Acts. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll preach this gospel, the gospel will go out starting in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and moving out to the ends of the earth. So that's what we see there. And then, of course, in First Thessalonians, we see Paul's own words. We read Paul's own words. Uh, to this new church uh, at Thessalonica. And probably should say that this is, um, um, when we look at it, we look at it as having gone out, uh, and this is exactly what is supposed to happen. The God's supposed to go into um, all of the world, except for it is not being received. Uh, there is tension. This moment that we are reading is, is there is tension between the believers and the unbelievers, and that becomes a significant um um, uh, th- that sets up this particular opportunity for uh, explaining and proving um, why Jesus had to die and rise from the dead. And, and these are the words that we, we receive when we start to look at what is in um, uh, Acts, which is the accompanying, accompanying text. But um, this tension that has been brought up is also a follow through of the fact that there will be persecution. And um, these are the words that are not just ended with the death of Jesus, but continue with how it is that we will offer this news, this world alter- altering news um, in a world that increasingly um, refuses or is unable to believe. One of the things I really like about this part of doing the narrative lectionary is the pairing of the Acts readings each year with Paul's letters. So we have this week, chapter 17, where Paul arrives at Thessalonica, and then, as Catherine said, verses 1 through 10 of 1 Thessalonians, uh, which uh, it's uh, when I I teach uh, the capstone course uh, for our Master of Divinity students with Christopher Pham Kaufman. And Christopher always likes to say, hey, the New Testament doesn't begin with Matthew 1 or Mark 1. It begins with Paul and Silas and Timothy. He always says it's not just Paul. Their letter to the Thessalonians, it's it's the earliest document we think that we have yes. um, of the New Testament. So it's, and one of the things, if you pair these two readings together, you get a couple of 
really interesting um, complementary or tensions, I'm not sure. On the one hand, Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians about his great thanksgiving, and then here he says in verse 9, uh, the people of those regions report about us what kind of a welcome we had among you and how you, how you turned from idols to serve the living the true God. The, uh, if you go back and then you hear, hear the kind of welcome, on the one hand, um, some came and were persuaded and joined, and it says a great many uh, joined, but then um, some became very jealous and the welcome was not at all welcoming because violence and persecution are turned against the uh, early believers. Um, and then this tension between turning from idols to living God and verse three in Acts 17, I find really interesting. I'm going to read the NRSV. I, I'm not sure I like it. It says that Paul, uh, they went in and Paul was explaining uh, and proving and it was, he argued with them. Those those three verbs, uh, you should take a look at, uh, um, see what options are. I'm not, I think it's more like opening, rather than explaining and proving, it's more like opening up and um, commending that it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and rise. There's something about the message of Jesus that the death and suffering of the Messiah turn, can, has the power to turn us away from the idols that the worthless things that we would serve. I love that. I, I think that's really helpful, uh, both of you. Uh, the, uh, the verse I particularly like in Acts 17 is when... Um, verse uh, four. Verse six, actually. Oh. Uh, when So they, they attack Jason's house. I, I'm not sure who Jason is. He's an early believer, I guess, but it's not really explained who he is. That, of, uh, of course, is a Greek name, Jason. Um, but when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some believers before the city authorities, shouting, these people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also, and Jason has entertained them as guests. They're all acting contrary to the decrees of the emperor, saying that there is another king named Jesus. I love that. These people who have been turning the world upside mm -hmm. down have come yes. here also, right? Like, we've heard about these people. They've, they've been causing uh, whatever, chaos, or uh, they that's the accusation anyway, right? They've been causing chaos. Yeah. Uh, they're they're, they're um, uh, disturbers of the peace, we might say today. Uh, but they, they speak uh, more truth than they realize, I think, right? They've been turning the mm -hmm. world upside down. But not in a way of, you know, not a disordered society or, or chaos, but uh, turning expectations on their heads and preaching, of all things, a crucified Messiah, a crucified God who, who, who rises, who has risen from the dead. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, as Ralph, you said, uh, you know, um, encouraging people, urging people uh, to turn from idols to the living God. I just think that's a beautiful way of talking about it, right? That uh, the the living God uh, turns expectations on their heads and turns the world upside down, uh, or the gospel of the living God does that as well, uh, you know. And and so no wonder, right? No wonder some people feel threatened by that. Now, obviously, we have to, as always, when the Jews are mentioned as the enemy here. Um, you know, the Jews became jealous, and with the help of some ruffians, they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar. Um, we never want to um, contribute to any feeling of anti-Semitism. So uh, this, even now, right, Paul, <laughs> Paul is a Jew, uh, and, and Silas, and so um, this is an inner Jewish uh, controversy. Uh, so just, yeah, be careful maybe just make mention of that in your sermon, that, that this is not the Jews as enemies. This is um, some this is uh, some Jewish folks, yeah, um, 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 being in conflict with, with Paul and Silas and the other early disciples who are all Jews. One of the, one of the ways, I think, uh, to take note of that um, is also going back with this idea that uh, um, the letters are what we have first because initially the events of 
people's encounter with Jesus and the rumors of the resurrection are fresh in everyone's mind. Mm -hmm. But as that story is spreading outside of Judea, outside of the zip code where they occurred, that um, those stories have to be um, explained, expressed. And uh, so then that takes us back to um, the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles. And so uh, in this sense, we are talking to people who are responding the exact same way they responded to Jesus. These are leaders. Uh, these are uh, uh, religious experts, legal experts. These are faithful followers of what they understand to be the Jewish religion, just like Paul before he encountered Jesus. But just like the gospel stories describe all those Jews that first Jesus ministered to. And so um, I think when we're explaining this, we need to say that the, the, the early church disciples are doing exactly what Jesus did. They are confronting those who have made a religion that has lost the powerful transforming work that God is doing in the world. And yes, it is turning Thessalonica upside down. It is turning the Roman and Greek caste system upside down. It is also turning upside down the religious, and I put that in quotes, uh, practices, even of uh, the followers, uh, the descendants of Abraham and Sarah, who missed that what God is doing in the world through Jesus is for all the world. And that turns their world upside down too. Yeah. I just want to say one more thing. Um, the, so, you know, your congregants, you may be wondering, well, what does this have to do with us? <laughs> um, just I think remind uh, your hearers, your congregation, that that they have more in common with the Thessalonians, the Thessalonians, Thessalonians. Thank you, sorry, Thessalonians, Thessalonians. Uh, the Thessalonian church, uh, than perhaps uh, those that are eyewitnesses to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Right, we're moving yes. to that to that next generation, so to speak, or, or moving that circle outward. Um, including to Gentiles. So we who are, I think, overwhelmingly Gentile in, in congregation, in Christian congregations, we who have not been witnesses to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we are uh, addressed by this letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Um, we always give thanks to you for, uh, thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you, right? Uh, chosen you and, uh, uh, and, and therefore turn our world upside down as well. That's a word of promise, not just to the Thessalonians, but to us as well. Catherine, you make a good point in terms of that. The closer that you stay to the text, the more it's going to sound like you've gotten into the contemporary political agendas. Um, and that's because it truly is a living word. And we are very much like those first uh, hearers of the gospel, uh, those who did not themselves walk with Jesus and talk with Jesus, but who heard the testimony of those who, because of their encounters with Jesus, their lives were changed. And so the closer that you stay to the text, the more it's going to sound like, well, did you just get political on me? No, I'm talking about the Thessalonians. Uh, what did you hear? And that's where we have to say, let's stop and remind ourselves that the Holy Spirit might be convicting us in the same way that those first hearers were convicted.